One way GPA could be calculated is by using the expenditure approach, which is defined as total annual expenditures in four categories of final goods and services. These four categories are consumer goods and services, business goods and services, government goods and services, and net exports or imports of goods and services. The income approach calculates GDP by adding up all the incomes of the economy. GDP also calculates durable goods, which include consumer goods, goods that last for a relatively long time, like the example of the refrigerator. Non-durable goods are goods that last a short period of time, like in this example we have Coke and ketchup and toilet paper, soup, Clorox, those kinds of things. Nominal GDP is measured in current prices, but does not account for price levels that increase from year to year, as you can see here in this real nominal GDP graph. Real GDP is GDP expressed in concert, or in changing dollars, as you see here in this graph. Inputs of GDP must be analyzed through its limitations, so these are things that the GDP does not take into account during certain economic activities, like non-market activities. These um, do not measure goods and services that people make or do themselves, like children, lawns, food, like the grains in this picture. People made them themselves. Negative externalities are unintended side effects, like pollution, as you see here in this graph. They have monetary value. Another limitation is underground activity, economic activity that is not reported to the government, like the black market. The final limitation is quality of life, which is leisure time, pleasant surroundings, and or personal safety. Other income and output measures include gross national product, net national product, national income, personal income, and disposable personal income. Key indicators of GDP are also factors influencing GDP, like aggregate supply. As ag aggregate supply rises, real GDP increases. It also includes aggregate demand, which means lower price levels will increase aggregate demand as consumers' purchasing power increases. What is a business cycle? A business cycle is a modern industrial economy that experiences a cycle of good times, then bad times, then good times again. The four main phases of a business cycle are expansion, peak, contraction, and trust. Expansion is the period of economic growth, the rise of the real GDP. Peak is when GDP stops rising and the height of the economic expansion has been reached. Contraction is following the peak. It is the economic decline, following real GDP. Recession is prolonged and it may even reach depression. Trust is the lowest point of economic decline. It is when real GDP stops falling. What keeps a business cycle going? One thing for sure is business investment. Firms expect sales and profits to keep rising, and therefore they invest in new plants and equipment. Interest rates and credit are another thing that helps, often adding jobs to the economy. When interest rates climb, investment dries up, as does job growth. Consumer expectations forecast an expanding economy, often adding fuel for more spending. External shocks, such as disruptions like oil supply wars or natural disasters, greatly influence the output of the economy. Economic stability tools include measuring economic growth, which starts with GDP and population and growth. In order to account for population increase in the economy, economists use a measure of real GDP per capita. GDP and quality of life, like measures of GDP itself, is a measurement of real GDP per capita that excludes many factors that affect quality of life. When determining forms of unemployment, you must be doing voluntary versus involuntary unemployment. Then, you look at frictional unemployment. The unemployment to be wary of is cyclical, because with this it could cause very drastic measures in the economy. Full employment is not necessarily defined as an economy that has zero unemployment. Actually, there is a degree to which there should be unemployment to determine what full employment would look like. And in 2013, the MPC declared that 7% was the unemployment threshold. As you can see here, this graph shows exactly what full employment looks like in an economy. Thank you for watching my presentation.